Hey everybody, I have a video here for you and I thought this would be a good subject for a video. I've had a couple questions asked about this and I have not spoken of this yet. And I have spoken of serious questions that need to be asked about the dating of structures in Egypt, especially things on the Giza Plateau such as the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx and how old those structures actually are. And I will leave a few links for some videos below. But myself, you, this might sound foolish to many, but I actually look at what the ancient Egyptians tell us is a history of ancient Egypt instead of present-day Egyptologists who clearly have an agenda to associate everything in Egypt to dynastic periods of Egyptian history. That is just the goal of the Antiquities Council in Egypt, mainly for tourism dollars, which is the main influx of uh, money into the Egyptian economy. And what you're looking at here is called the Inventory Stella. And I will read in just a second here about it, but this was discovered I think about 150 years ago. And the history that the ancient Egyptians were recording is different from what Egyptologists tell you today. And I just want to do a little reading here. Now let's read what it says on the Inventory Stella. It says, Found at Giza by August Mariette in the 1850s in the ruins of the Temple of Isis, it clearly states that Khufu restored the Sphinx. This stone provides some of the strongest evidence that the Sphinx was constructed before Khufu and not by him. It says, Long live the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Khufu, given life, he found the house of Isis, mistress of the pyramid, by the side of the hollow of Huron, and that is the name that they attach to what we know today as the Sphinx. The Sphinx is a name that the Greeks gave to it when they took over about 2,000 years ago. And he built his pyramid beside the temple of this goddess, and he built a pyramid for the king's daughter, Hanutsen, beside this temple. The place of Huron Horomeket is on the south side of the house of Isis, mistress of the pyramid. He restored the statue, all covered in painting, of the guardian of the atmosphere who guides the winds with his gaze. He replaced the back part of the Nemes headdress, which is missing with gilded stone. The figure of this god cut in stone is solid and will last to eternity, keeping its face looking always to the east. And that implies that the Sphinx and the, a temple to Isis was existing before Khufu and Khafre in the fourth dynasty. It says, while it is believed by traditional Egyptologists that this stella was carved in the 26th dynasty, the reason why the statement that Khufu restored it is ignored by modern Egyptologists is a mystery as the other information on it is regarded by the same people as historical fact. And that is a great hypocrisy, hypocrisy that I have pointed out in Egyptology. If something on an ancient monument or tomb or temple, if that confirms their model of history, they accept it. But if something, even sometimes on the same object, if it is disregarded and it uh, you know falls out of their line or their accepted model of history, they totally deny it. It's total hypocrisy, and it's one of the reasons why I think Egyptology and what they try to pass off as real history is rather lame. Now, it seems that back in Egypt a long time ago, they would erect stellas when the Sphinx was uncovered and restored. And part of the reason why Egyptologists, or in fact, the main reason why Egyptologists and other people link the building of the Sphinx to the fourth dynasty is what it says on this, and this is the dream stella of Thutmose IV from the 18th dynasty from around 3,500 years ago. And there is an inscription that has flaked off and only half of the name, Kaf, appears, and it's in association with the Sphinx. So Egyptolog Egyptologists just leap to this conclusion based on nothing that Khafre is the image, the face, of what we see today on the Sphinx. And they associate the building to the fourth dynasty just based loosely on half of a name and nothing else that says specifically that it was built 
in the fourth dynasty. They'll take that as fact, but the inventory Stella, they'll totally disregard the fact that it says that Khufu restored the Sphinx. And what does it say about this original name that the ancient Egyptians gave to the Sphinx? It says, Harmachus, Horus of the Horizon, is its interpretation, personified the rising sun and was associated with Kepri as symbolizing resurrection and eternal life. And I think that speaks a lot. People talk about the alignment of the Sphinx to Leo, but let's look at what the ancient Egyptians tell us is the alignment and personified the rising sun. That's always what the Sphinx rep uh, represented. The only alignment built into the Sphinx was its alignment to the rising sun. And the attributions given to the name of uh, Haram Haramachus, or Haramachus, I'm not sure, pronunciation isn't one of my stronger points, but he is personified, he personified the rising sun and is associated with Kepri as symbolizing resurrection and eternal life. And these are just the old attributions, the original attributions given to the god Anubis, and that was the original form of the Sphinx. And I just want to read a little here. It says Anubis is the Greek name for the jackal-headed god associated with mummification in the afterlife in Egyptian mythology. In the ancient Egyptian language, Anubis is known as Inpu and uh, a few other things. The oldest known mention of Anubis is in the Old Kingdom Pyramid text, where he is associated with the burial of the king. At this time, Anubis was the most important god of the dead but he was replaced during the Middle Kingdom by Osiris. And that is the reason why the Anubis statue was dismantled probably on purpose. That's the way they did things in Egypt in the olden days. When one, when one god's rule was over and they turned to a new god, they dismantled the old statues and things in the tombs and the art. And that is what happened to the old Sphinx in the form of Anubis. And here is the famous funerary scene in the Hall of Two Truths where Anubis is weighing the heart against the feather. And basically what he is doing is it's just a judgment of good and evil or light and darkness. And that is played out in perfect archaeoastronomy on the Giza Plateau when the Sphinx is perfectly aligned to the rising sun on the spring equinox the day that represents a perfect balance of light and darkness. So I think the funerary scene of Anubis, that is a great hint at what the original Sphinx was. It is played out in perfect symbolism on the Giza Plateau every March 21st. And also in the inventory Stella, it talks of Khufu erecting a few pyramids on the Giza Plateau next to an existing temple and common sense just tells me that uh, we'll go over to Google Earth here that Khufu built a few of these small pyramids that are alongside the Great Pyramid. That is all up for speculation but that's just what common sense tells me. These monuments were already standing in a previous video I uh, read where a priest of Khufu said that the monuments on the Giza Plateau were built by the immortal gods, and they don't know who built them exactly. So with everything coming from the ancient Egyptians, including the inventory Stella, I would say that, you know, serious questions have to be raised as far as the history of Egypt, as far as what we are told by Egyptologists. I guess I'm done rambling here. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a nice day.